Hey everybody, welcome back to Fawan Channel with Fawan and Friends featuring the great Micro. Hi everybody, it's great to be back. As we play more Aviary Attorney. Now we are currently in the middle of our court case with our quote unquote Prince of Spain. And we just proved that... Um, we just suggested. Yes, we did suggest that the rose that was believed to be the murder weapon possibly wasn't the murder weapon, but a piece of ch poison chocolate nearby. And I'm about to call... A surprise witness. I think it's going to be Sparrowson. He is pretty much the toucan Sam of the group. I mean, he, really is. he just follow his nose. He'll tell you what the food is. Okay, let's try this. I, I, I am not a bird expert, but... I am. Bowen, I am a bird expert. <laughs> Do our sparrows known to, like, rummage for food and stuff like that? Let, I... me, let me check Google, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay. So you're not the expert. Google is the Google expert. is the expert. All right, let's find out who this surprise witness is. I think you might be right. It might be uh, it might be either Sparrowson or that elephant guy. The that elephant guy, yeah. Oh, I see. Hmm. But do you know for certain the Major Hal consumed this chocolate? Well, that is a fact that we are, will are still investigating. I see. Do you have evidence that this chocolate was in fact poisoned? Uh, again, that is something that may require a little more time to definitively prove. So then in actuality, you do not have evidence that Major Howell consumed some poison chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish you pluck straight out of the gutter. That's weak even for you, JJ. What was it in the gutter? Let's move things along. I'm another witness I would like to summon. He is a man who claims to have an excellent view of the people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. Oh, it's going to be that photographer, dude. Oh, God, I hate that man. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Knightley. Kingly. Oh, no, it's not him. It's somebody else. Could the witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? I'll be that, dude. <laughs> he looks like Sparrowson! No, he got the fish pole! I'm gonna s oh, Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, right, the oath. Uh, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to let the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please state your full name and occupation for the court record. My name is Toussaint Kingley, and I am a person who fishes. He's You're a kingfisher. Fish ah! that's, that's what he is. That's the type of bird he is. He's a kingfisher. That's, that's my cute. guess. That's my guess. A person who fishes, so you're a fisherman. That's why his name last name is Kingley. He's a fisherman. Anyway, sorry. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon? Here comes this old Kingley, the kingfisher. <laughs> Clearly, he must be a fisherman, because... You didn't hear all king fishermen's are fishermen. Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And, and, can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel, and bait without being branded a fisherman? Look, look. <laughs> the prosecutor is carrying a riding crop. Clearly, he must be a horse jockey. Oh, for pity's sake. Fine, fine. We can list your occupation as a person who fishes, not fisherman. Thank you. Actually, uh, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I've never seen you ride a horse. I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30-something-year-old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is veering quite off course. Could the prosecution please get back to his questions? <laughs> They're just so snarky at each other. I love it. Of course, it. <laughs> Your Honor. Monsieur Kingley, is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yes, I was sitting upon a railing of the Pont des Arts. Right there. The Pont des Arts. Oh, that's you. <laughs> the Pont des Arts? Des Arts? That's a new bridge that's just a stone's throw away from the Rue's south entrance, correct? That's right. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? Fishing. I was fishing! <laughs> King fishes. Am I right, Falcon? So you would have had plenty of opportunities to see the people who entered and exited the palace. Can you tell us who you saw? Well, the Louvre's a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m., I saw the king, Louis Philippe himself, enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then, around 9.30, I saw this shifty-looking fox lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness using of the terms shifty-looking. It's a vague and biased description. I thought our guy is a wolf, not a fox. No, he's a fox. Volpe is fox. No, really, he looks super fi shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. <laughs> oh, there's the rose. And I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stem of the rose, you say? As if you were applying something to the flower, perhaps. Well, monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Yeah, you should not. 
Of course, it was wrong of me to ask you such a leading question. This guy's cute and smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. But yeah, it definitely looked like he was putting some sort of powder on the stem. Well, I wasn't even expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like we have here a direct witnessing of the defendant readying the murder weapon. The defense claims the rose was never poisoned, yet here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury. You do? No question. He saw a shifty looking criminal writing poison and cackling near the scene of a crime? That's not believable at all. I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls Tristan's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again. Hey, I was right before. You just heard the witness directly describe your client writing poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. Ugh, fine. Do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool out of yourself. Cross examination. I was sitting on the. I, I'm not gonna dispute that. At 9 a.m. because they did say it was it was the bridge mm. and people gonna fish off a bridge. How about the pa- you can dispute King and his entourage, mm. shifty looking fox, some sort of power. Did he actually see those powder? No, that's the question. Yeah, because if, if anything, he's leading the jury. Do we have jury. something? Do we have something in our evidence box? I don't think so. Um, we have. Can you click on the business card again? Just go to the yeah. I, I thought Volpe is, was wolf. No, no, no. It's okay. it's, it's fox. A wolf is uh, f- uh. I used to know Latin. <laughs> I forgot what wolf was. Some. Uh, whatever. If you guys know what Latin or uh, Latin French for is for is... wolf, it's it's not Volpe. It's something else. I think we're going with powder too. Yeah, I think it's powder, and I think we're gonna um bring up the. Probably the rose. Yes. Just because it's like, we don't know what he used on it, but like, did you actually see it? Because mm-hmm. we already brought up the shifting looking fox, which mm-hmm. could be uh, profile. Oh, it's racial the map profile. Again. I, had, we, I wish we had the map again. Do we have the map? No, we do not have the map. We'll give you 39 francs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll go with powder. Mr. Kingsley, you said that you saw a fox rubbing the stem of a rose. Yep, saw it with my own eyes. I'm sure it was a rose. No, he had a rose. That's stupid. Are you sure it was you saw powder? Mm-hmm. How far away were you from the south entrance? Twenty meters, perhaps? Thirty? I'm somewhat doubtful that you can make out powder being applied to anything at those sort of distances. It's you, I don't claim to have seen the powder itself. Ah, you're leading everyone to believe so. I said that it looked like he was applying powder to the flower stem. It could have been a wax or a liquid or whatever, but the guy was definitely putting hmm. something on the flower. I see. Well, that's nice and vague. Do you have any other questions about the poison rose? Yes. <sighs> do we? What is it? The fl- it's probably gonna be the flower question. I just do it. Are you sure it was a rose? I mean, we know it's a rose. Well, if we click never mind, or do we go back to statements again? I think so. Okay, let's try it then. Okay, we'll do never mind. Never mind. I have no questions about the poisoned rose. At 9 a.m., I saw the king and his entourage enter the building. At 9.30, shifty-looking fox. Wait, but if the... 10 o'clock is when they saw him die. No, 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 no. Why would the fox stand out, considering that if the king is out and about looking at, like, the new paintings and stuff, I'm pretty sure it would have been a big fanfare. There probably would have been, like, a ton of people. Why is it we only have one witness? Well, his entourage. Remember, there are two dozen witnesses from previous... From yeah, no, that, 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 that he gave him the rose. My point is... What is it about this guy that stuck out that you saw that made him look okay. shifty look? I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll go with this one. We'll go with this one. Okay. Sir Kings, are you claiming that you saw a shifty looking fox? Yep, super mega shifty. Super mega? All foxes are shifty looking? Are you sure it was Prince Juan? Ooh, that's a good point. There must be at least 100 foxes in parents. How do you know the fox you saw was Prince Juan? Well, he's wearing this a suave hat that hangs low over his eyes. I hear that's how they wear them in Spain. And I'm not much of a fashion expert, but the rest of the outfit looked quite out of place for the French winter. Is that all you're going by? <laughs> His fashion sense. Oh, I nearly forgot. I heard him call a passerby, Seigneur. I thought that was peculiar. Well, that's him, all right. That. <laughs> I think it's gonna be the time. Let's try the. It's, I, I, maybe it's the king and his entourage. I, that hurts the, the Well, those are the last two on. 
because like we, we he says he sees all this stuff but about i don't know i would go with the entourage we'll, we'll, we'll try that so king so you say you saw the king himself enter the louvre indeed i did who was in the king yep did you see who's in the king's entourage well there was the king himself obviously and there was quite a few guards, maybe four or five, including a big dog who I hear is the guy who died, Major Howell. I think that was all. I see. Then were the two dozen witnesses? I'm guessing the people around okay. them saw them give them the rose. Do we? Try yes. Let's see if another question pops up. Are you sure? That must be the... I but never mind. Let's I... go to the point. The yeah. bridge. Yeah. Never mind. I'll have something else. King Z, you say you were sitting upon the railings of the Ponte Arts at the morning of the incident? Yep. Is that a good fishing spot? Uh, we're gonna get dinged for that. Yeah. What entrances can you see from that bridge? I think that's a good question. Mr. King Z, you had a good view of the loose south entrance, didn't you? <laughs> oh, now we get the map. That's what you want to see, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, the Ponte Arts is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery's south side. So he was right here. Yeah. Sit on the railing. I don't know if that means he was here or here. Yeah. And that's the south entrance, which means they went through here and then they came out here. So yeah. he would not have seen anything that happened in there, yeah. leading up to the actual uh, incident. Incident. Yes. Um, Only people going in. That's wait. All. Didn't didn't the photographer say he saw the fox over here and the fox approached from this side? I don't recall. It was such a long time ago. Oh, I think that's what was going on. Here. What about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you were entering the Tulare's Garden or the place pa the place du Carousel? No, I couldn't possibly. Oh, that's you. I forgot, Fallen. Oh. I wanted to speak so badly. <laughs> if you're cold, you can grab something. That's okay. My crow's like shivering right I'm next shivering. to me. <laughs> Just grab like okay, a blanket. Okay, I'll go grab a blanket, everybody. We'll be right back. Considering I'm talking to myself anyways, go ahead. No, I couldn't possibly see the area f those areas from the bridge. Oh, now it's you. <laughs> but of course that isn't relevant. <laughs> Wait till you get close. <laughs> Hold on, I'm coming. Alrighty, now I have my comfy fleece blanket. But of course that isn't relevant. Monsieur Knightley Winston witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with a flowered hand, and that's what he counts. What if Prince Juan used another entrance? Because remember, we... Uh, yeah, I think the, you're right. The other guy, the photographer said that he saw him from coming from the other direction. I don't recall this. Well, oh, I... You're right. Oh, I'm uh, still calling this. What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached from the Lou, the Lou from uh, the it's Tulea's the garden. Guardians? Yeah. Yes, yes. Tulea's Gardens to the west. That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the Lou from Tulea's Gardens? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. I have the fitter proof that Prince Juan approached from the west and not the south. Hey, I know what I saw, Monsieur. I'm doubtful too. Go on, JJ. Show us this definitive proof that Prince Juan entered from the Louvre, from the Tuileries Gardens. It's, remember the page? Yes. Yep. It was found in Tuileries Garden, but the Louvre's at West Entrance. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at this. A book page? Page 44 of Don Quixote. Specifically, it was found just outside the Louvre's West Entrance. That proves nothing. I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Don Quixote? This is the book the Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe that he has had it on his person for some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. You do realize what this means, don't you, Severn? The defendant was present in Tulea's gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means that, in all likelihood, the defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance and not the south! Sure. He could not possibly have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Ponte Art. What? I know what I saw, monsieur! Fine theory, Falcon, but maybe the defendant took a long way around. One can still travel from Tuileries to the Louvre's south entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre murder scenery? Let's not say silly things, Cocorito. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the investigation. Now you're the ones who's blindly speculating. It's not blind speculation, it's a viable hypothesis! <laughs> Love it, man. They hate each other. Oh, this smug guy, man. I swear. <laughs> His tummy looks smug. You are fond of logic, aren't you, Cocorito? Let's talk about Occam's razor. 
When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes fewer assumptions? One, the page from Prince Juan's book fell out on his way to the Louvre's south entrance. Two, Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered. Then he took the long way around. How dare you, the nerve of you, to lecture me on the basic philosophical concepts. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such bias mis basic mistakes. <laughs> Monsieur Falcon, please calm yourself. <laughs> what is the point of all this yammering? <laughs> I feel like he just fell asleep through the entire thing. I, I don't think he's paying attention. He's like, guilty. You know, he's just, he's whatever. The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated, made up, utter fiction. No, no, no. Everything I said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman! <laughs> See him? It's him himself! <laughs> I'm, like, I'm leading the witness, though. I'm, yeah, waiting, for, I'm waiting for the objection. That's not what they meant! Uh, innocent, innocent, perhaps. Bucks. What a twist. I love it. What a twist. I wish, we had a, I wish we had a favor meter. I was just about to say the same thing. Like, over here or something. Like, oh, 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 oh. Then we kind of know like, where we can, like, we stand. Yeah. I think that's like this, the, the mysterious bit of it. Prosecutor, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? Concede the case? Did I win? On this point, at least, ah. falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur Knight Kingley's testimony is false. Ah, no! This doesn't mean that Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. True that. But I did see something. I really did. I really did. Plot trust. All right. So maybe I didn't see exactly a shitty looking fox. I made that part <gasps> up. Made that other story. Oh, oh, so therefore we can't trust any of your you testimony. Say. But I did see a swan <gasps> lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. What? I'm afraid a swan is not a fox. Has nothing to do with this case. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it does. probably does. But he doesn't know that. Yeah. Nobody knows that, except for maybe the judge. Because he's Le in on judge. it. Le judge. Le judge. A swan. Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? True that. Uh, uh, your honor, Judge Romulus, we're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to start on the hair versus tortoise <laughs> trial. <laughs> I, I want to sit on Aesop that one. Aesop fable. I want to oh. sit on that one. Oh, I just noticed this. This ostrich guy, his uh, cane is also an ostrich. It's kind of cool. That's actually kind of cool. Is that late already? Curses, I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single session. That was actually a pretty short trial. I've never been to a court, so I'm assuming this is actually a pretty short trial. I did. It, I, I was in the jury. I was not on in the court. <laughs> I was in the jury, and it lasted three days. It was not a pleasant No, but experience. like during the during the course of a day, like, that. Did, I mean, how long has it been? Maybe a half hour now? Less than that. I mean, like how, 15 minutes or so? No, but how long was, was the trial that you're in? Oh, three days? So no, eight don't, don't, hours. Like, oh, so it was like eight hours. Eight there's, hours a day? There's no way, well, again, it's Paris, so maybe they do things They like they're sleeping, don't they? I suppose so. But it's a continue. shame, but ultimately an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. Yes, all right, I don't need to hear your moralizing. Call will resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. And it's the 16th right now, right? 17th. 17th, we have three so days. We, we have a few days. Three or four days. Prosecutor, do your damn job. Get this stupid fox conviction already. I'll do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor. Oh. <laughs> I'm loving this. A lot came up in that trial, huh? <laughs> yeah, quite. Yeah, no doubt that. No doubt about that. This other thing's bothering me. Why would that fisherman guy, Mr. Kingley, lie on the witness stand? I think he was put up to it by... He's paid. By, I'm assuming by the, the wolves. But I think so, too. Maybe he likes the attention. Maybe he was coerced. Just be the silent protagonist. No, nah, coerced, nah. Fawad. I'm thinking he was coerced. Well, it's possible that he was coerced or bribed. That's just what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman in making up a story about Prince One. Let's keep it in mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, noth something else is bothering me about the trial. Judge Romulus? Mademoiselle Sine. Sine. I think it's Judge Romulus. He's bugging me about the trial. No, I think it's I think I'm her swan because, because she was said. brought up as if she was important, yep. which I think is well what's... by Juan Juan he brought her up as she was important, but she didn't do anything because I did it. I know, but she is the central focus of it, a whole yeah, thing, I think you're right. and the fact that the um, uh, the king the king fisherman guy 
brought her up. I think that's yeah. that's the full point of this next part of the investigation. So I'm gonna say that. I disagree with you though, Colin. <laughs> Mademoiselle Signe, I believe that she plays a key part in this case, but getting her to tell the story is proving difficult. Surely you don't think she's the real murderer? No, I don't. Ooh. Excuse me, uh, uh, excuse me, Monsieur Falcon. Guess who I think this Mousy? is? Mousy? I think it's Mousy. Oh, oh it's, it's the, the hair, hair man! Rabbington. Sorry, that, uh, you want to do this guy? No, no, it was you. Sorry to bother you, but this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. It's <laughs> A letter for me. I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, R- Rupert? Oh, hush now, Sparrison. I don't be a pitied by a first-year dropout. <laughs> oh, good comeback. So, what did the letter say, Falcon? Uh, just based off the fact that there's like a bunch of different like letter like capitalizations here, I'm gonna assume it's like one of those ransom notes. Like ransom notes where they like cut out like different parts of <laughs> oh like, magazines and like glue them on there. It's. It's a threat. A threat made with cut out oh newspaper letters. Whoa, I didn't know those things actually existed. Let me see. Falcon, stop your investigation or there will be consequences. Scary. There's no question that this letter originated from Major Howell's murderer. He or she must be aware that we are getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right, but why would a person with cut out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although, I can't but wa- help but wonder why they would bother since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We're still going to have that investigation, though, right? Absolutely! Totes. It's all about the truth, man. Nothing but the truth. Oh, yes, absolutely. If I only were to tell every time they received a threatening letter, they would never get any work done. Besides, with only three days before the next trial se- session, we can't afford to be worried about petty things like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Wow, you're right. Let's make those days count. True that. I think something's up with this judge and it's bugging me. Bugging yeah, me he, so much. He's part of the Illuminati. <laughs> the Wolfalati. The Wolfalati? Yeah. All right, where are we going? Okay. Um. So what do we need? We, we can either go to Louvre, the Chocolate Emporium. Um, what was the Le Car- uh Joyeux? That was the... That was the tavern. That was the tavern, right? Mm-hmm. I think we should go to R&M... Le Halls was where Signe was. Oh, yeah. So I think let's do some short ones, not an all-day one right now. I, I Well, I, I, think, I think we need to go to R&M Associates because I think we'll get more about Signe from Mousy. You want to try it? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's try it. Um, unless you want to go see uh, Mr. Fox real quick. Well, if we see Mr. Fox real quick, we may get more information. And that we can use with mouse. Yeah, he might be able to point us in the right direction to the next thing. So let's okay. we'll go there real quick. It's right next to the courtyard. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> he is just not having our shit. Okay. Nope. Well, we will follow up on our investigation. Well, you know what? No, let's head over there. I was about to end it right now, but no, let's let's head over there. Let's go to let's go see Mouse here real okay, quick. I, I have a feeling it might be fairly short. Yeah, but then we'll waste a day. I was making a mouse joke. You sure? Uh... Oh, hello again. Hi, Mousy. Mousy, we have a message for you. It's from Prince Juan himself. He wants to know if the birds have flown south for the winter, whatever that means. Oh, yes, 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 the birds have migrated successfully. But if Monsieur, I mean Prince Juan, told you that, then that must mean he trusts you. Ooh, we got something. He must want you to take these. Go on, take them, take them. These are used train ticket stubs. It looks like two people took... A railway trip to Vienna. What exactly is the point of this, Mousy? Two people. Prin- oh, Prince Juan said that they would help with this trial. See the names? See the names? Gatier Signe, Nicole Signe, which means... It's the swan. She has not left yet. You mean think those are her parents? I think those are her parents. Okay. Well, maybe, unless her name was I don't, Nicole. I don't think it was Nicole. I think she told us her first name. I forgot, but I just don't remember familiar. what it was. Yeah. I think it was like Colette or something. And again, I'm assuming most unnamed French women French are called Colette. Colette. I recognize the surname, but I don't know who these people are. Oh, neither do I, really. Monsieur, I mean, Prince Juan just told me to book train tickets for these people and then to make sure they got on the train. And so, and so that's what I did. Strange. I'm not sure exactly how these stubs are supposed to help with the trial, but I'll hold on to, I'll, I'll keep hold of them just in case. Excellent. We got new evidence. Let's, Let's go, Sparrowson. I'm done playing courier. Good call. That took us all day. That took us a whole day. 
Because I think it took us a whole day to travel there and then to get back to the oh. office and file everything. Okay. All right. We'll call it here for now, guys. Thanks again for watching Fawin Channel with Micro and Fawin uh, for Aviary Attorney. What was it? Avocat Volier. Yeah. No, you were trying to say something? Please join us next time for another <laughs> great installment. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends because I want to meet more of you. <laughs> yes, please share the videos out to the rest of the world. And uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Take care, guys. We'll see you all next time. Bye.